Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Dense fog rolls into the Chicago area tonight, and WGN meteorologist Tom Skilling says it could affect holiday travel in six states. Plus a scare tonight in the Chicago subway as a gunman opens fire with a semi-automatic weapon and wounds a mass transit worker. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Sanders. And I'm Allison Payne. Our big story this Friday night, the subway shooting. It happened a short time ago at State and Grand. And WGN's Chuck Coppola is there now with uh, the very latest. Chuck, good evening. Good evening, Steve and Allison. Yes, some very tense moments here. Donna. So tonight, the fan handgun got off a subway train here at State Street and Grand Avenue. Police say the two men had apparently been drinking, and when confronted by a plainclothes police officer, both men went running down the platform. More police were called, and the gunman, one of them, opened fire, injuring a mass transit officer, wounding him in the left forearm and frightening many passengers nearby. I saw a guy just running through, you know, and he looked pretty scared. He was tripping up the tracks, and, you know, he ran upstairs, that's all. And uh, after that, a guy came down pointing a pistol, you know, over this, in this area. And, you know, it just kind of frightened me a little bit. The second suspect was apprehended less than an hour ago. The, the weapon was recovered as well. Both men right now are in police custody, and luckily there were very few people on that platform at the time of this incident. Nobody else was injured in this. Police say they are lucky uh, again that they caught the two men, and there were reports that the two men may have been involved in a robbery. However, police are still investigating that. Reporting live downtown Chicago, I'm Chuck Coppola at WGN News. All right, Chuck, thank you. Let's get to our other big story tonight, a thick blanket of fog covering the Chicago area. That's right, Tom Skilling joins us now with the Weather Center with more on this fog moving into the area. Tom. Boy, Allison and Steve, visibilities have oscillated between zero and one-eighth of a mile at Meg's Field, even though hair has gone down to zero. Show you something very quickly and come back later on the full weather segment with an update. That's moisture in the Midwest. See that green plot? It originates from the Gulf of Mexico. Here's what's happened to set up the fog. We've been humid. We had 56 today. That was warm tropical air and then about five six o'clock tonight a cool front hit turned winds to the northeast and with that fog formed because we dropped the temperature immediately off the cool lake to the dew point here are the visibilities right now all over the midwest half a mile at o'hare three quarters midway quarter mile down at meg's field and gary and we've got rain coming too so there's a lot to talk about this could be a rainy foggy period that fog could be with us till tomorrow night then the winds start to howl that'll thin it out not the rains, though. We'll be back later with the full weather story, Allison and Steve, but that's a quick check from now All for right. the weather office. It's a mess out there. Thanks, Tom. You bet. Well, shoppers are out in full force this first <laughs> official day of the shopping season, and if you're headed out this weekend, here's a little advice. Many of the estimated 80,000 shoppers along Michigan Avenue today stayed well into the evening, and they had this advice if you plan on coming down tomorrow. The best thing to do is have a list when you come down here, what you're looking for. Don't come into the stores with all these people trying to shop and pick different things out. Have an idea in mind as to what you want to purchase. Oh, I took the train. Yeah, I took the train. I wasn't about to try and drive down here. Michigan Avenue is crazy. No way would I try and drive it. Just be patient. Just be patient. I think the businesses are doing well, dealing with the crowds. And security people like Bill Early warn of shoe shine scams that await unsuspecting shoppers. What they do, they usually uh, stop you and ask to shine one shoe. And while they're shining the other shoe, they tell you that's free. The next shoe will be five to six dollars or more. So they have a pretty uh, lucrative scam going. By 3 p.m., the Sony store surpassed the amount of sales it had last year on this day. With eye-catching video games luring customers, retailers expect the same number of people tomorrow. Of course, your early morning hours are going to be the ones where you can actually get some shopping done. Uh, the afternoons have just been wall-to-wall -wall with people. And it'll wane a little bit in the evening, and most stores are open late. So again, if you come after dinner, I think you're going to run into fewer crowds, a little bit more availability of salespeople. And at Woodfield Mall, 150,000 shoppers are filling stores until 10 p.m. with the parking lot nearly 90 percent full. Many opted to pay five dollars for valet yeah, parking. You can understand that. And with a robust economy showing no signs of ebbing, many retailers are anticipating record sales, but it might be premature. 
Despite promising predictions of consumer spending this holiday season, at least one poll reveals most Americans will be conservative at the cash register. A new Associated Press poll shows 50... 56% of Americans say they'll spend about the same this year as in 1996. 33% will actually spend less in 97, and while only 12% of shoppers say they're going to spend more this holiday season. Well, the city's official Christmas tree in Daly Plaza is shining brightly tonight, signaling the official start of the holiday season. Mayor Daly told the crowd at the tree lighting to exercise the holiday spirit by reaching out to a needy child. WGN's Dina Bear is at Lincoln Park Zoo tonight, where the holiday spirit's also coming alive. She's joining us now with more. Oh, Dina, really? good evening. Ooh, good evening, behind. Steve and Allison. <laughs> it feels like a winter wonderland out here without the winter weather. Believe it or not, that's actually kept crowds down just a bit. Apparently, people like snow here at the zoo. But we do have our great snowman behind us to make it feel like the season. And there are people all over Chicago taking in the sights and sounds, as you can hear the great music behind me, of this fabulous festive time. What better way to forget about the gray weather as you walk the streets of Chicago than to add a little light? Yes, the best way to beat the blues is to mix in some red and green. It's the, the official time to be nice to people, the Christmas spirit. <laughs> It's her first Christmas. She's got to see Santa. She got to sit on his lap, so got to start somewhere. <laughs> Even pint-sized revelers enjoy the 10,000 multicolored lights, which wind up 80 feet on the giant Christmas tree at Daly Plaza. Actually, there are 25 balsam firs from Wisconsin, adorned with 1,000 red bows that symbolize Christmas in Chicago. And it's a yearly thing that we do for the kids, and they really enjoy it. As the city rings in the season with the lighting, throngs of people march in time to Marshall Field, some to shop, others to stare at the prince and his pals that make up the nutcracker theme in the famous field windows. But those characters aren't the most famous at this time of year. This jolly fella is making an appearance, and he's brought along some snow from the North Pole. Tonight, it's inside this snow dome that caps off the executive plaza. Wreaths hang atop the Art Institute's lions. But the animals who are perhaps really tuning into the festivities tonight are at Lincoln Park Zoo. Music and masterful carving, warm hearts with chilly treats. But the big highlight is the countdown from five and the vision of eight tiny reindeer. And you can actually see the beautiful lights here from Lakeshore Drive, which through the fog you might not be able to see right now, but the lights will be on, shining bright for you through the new year. Live at Lincoln Park Zoo, Dina Bear, WGN News. Okay, Dina, I'm putting that at the top of my list of things to do. Thank you. Enjoy. Some other news tonight. A female staff member at a home for troubled youngsters or kids from broken homes is now charged with having sex with a 14-year-old boy there. 28-year-old Stacy Ann Rooney is charged with three counts of sexually assaulting the teen at the Moose Heart Child Care Facility. Police in the western suburb of Geneva say Rooney, who is a house parent, was discovered alone with the boy in his room. She's to appear in court December the 8th. Earlier this year, another house parent pleaded guilty to three counts of child pornography. And between 1989 and 1993, four Mooseheart parents were convicted of molesting children at the facility, which houses about 280 youngsters. And in north suburban Lake Missouri, a family of an 11-year-old girl wants to know why police haven't been more diligent in the investigation of their daughter being sexually molested. The suspect speaks Mandarin and may have already gone back to China. Police and prosecutors blame each other for not handling the case properly. The holiday shopping season starts with a jolt along the posh Gold Coast, an early morning heist of high-end hi-fi equipment. Tonight, one man faces burglary charges. Police say 21-year-old Jonathan Ovedo and some accomplices used a claw hammer to break a front display window at the Bang & Olufsen store on Oak Street. The men allegedly stole more than $20,000 and serial components. Some of the loot was found in a nearby alley. Tonight, the other suspects are still at large. 
Three CTA employees are being charged with stealing up to $100,000 from CTA cash boxes. A CTA spokeswoman says the suspects were arrested this week after a three-month investigation into missing fare money. The three have been charged with felony theft and official misconduct. They've been suspended without pay pending a police investigation. A West Side woman who abandoned her four children during the early hours of Thanksgiving reportedly told police she did so in order to go use cocaine. The youngsters ages four to seven were found early in the, in, in the 5100 block of Fulton Street by an area resident who took them in. Now 31-year-old Earlene Weems faces four misdemeanor counts of child neglect. Her ex-boyfriend is also charged with child endangerment for not letting the children into his apartment. Weems is wanted in suburban Oak Lawn for retail theft. The children now in the custody of the Department of Children and Family Services. A three-car accident in northwest suburban Woodstock has left one person dead, two others seriously injured. The crash happened today on Illinois Route 14 at Lily Pond Road. The car that apparently triggered the pileup was headed west toward Woodstock. According to witnesses, for an unknown reason, dropped off the shoulder of the road, went into a spin, uh, hit a vehicle and tried to avoid the accident, then continued sliding uh, sideways uh, westbound on 14, and it was hit broadside by a vehicle traveling eastbound on Route 14. The unidentified man killed in the accident was taken to Memorial Medical Center in Woodstock. Two people remain listed in very serious condition. Today's accident is the second auto fatality reported in the Chicago area this Thanksgiving weekend. Matt Rodriguez's reign as Chicago Police Superintendent ends this weekend. His retirement begins Monday. Mayor Daley has refused to talk about a replacement out of respect for Rodriguez, but a spokesman now confirms that Deputy Police Superintendent John Townsend has been tapped as acting superintendent. And Mayor Daley today outlined the steps toward a permanent replacement. The uh, police board is uh, already open for applications, you know, and so they did some, they're doing advertising, hired a consultant, and then from there, once the applications come in, then I'll start interviewing people. The process is about two months, the same as the last time. Townsend has been a Chicago cop for more than 40 years and served as a bodyguard for the mayor's late father. Superintendent Rodriguez had a couple of rough final months, including accusations that he mishandled police brutality and corruption cases and was close friends with a convicted felon. Just four years ago, Chicago had the worst mail delivery in the nation, a source of embarrassment for local postal authorities. But new statistics show a marked improvement in our mail service. In 1997 now, delivery from one city resident to another got there on time with 92% accuracy. That's up from 1993 when it was just 68% accuracy. These days, these days, mail sent from Chicago to other U.S. cities is also getting there on time, equal with the national average. Uh, we've uh, come into a new facility here uh, within the last couple of years, and that has helped to attribute to our being able to get the mail into our processing plant and back out to our postal stations for delivery in a uh, more expeditious manner. About 30% of Chicagoans rate their mail delivery as either fair or poor, but in New York, only 20% of residents feel that way. Well, good news for those Iowa septuplets. The Special 7 have reached another milestone. Details at 919. And then at 926, we'll take you to some microbreweries that are uh, brewing up some big business. And then at 944, we'll tell you why the sound of ripping wrapping paper is music to retailers' ears. And Allison and Steve, I'm Tom Skilling in the WGN Chicago Weather Center. Fog and then rain, that's the big weekend story. Could cause some travel problems, we have details on that. Then later, mild weather early next week, but big changes midweek. Could mean snow and colder on the way back in the longer range. The full forecast coming up later, stay with us. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News with Allison Payne, Steve Sanders, Tom Skilling, and Rich King, this is WGN News at 9. With its remarkably smooth ride, advanced instrumentation, available concert quality CD sound system, and available eight-way driver power seat. Can you find a truck in this picture? Presenting the new 1998 GMC Jimmy. And right now, for a limited time, get low 2.9% APR GMAC financing and save almost $3,400. Or get $1,000 cash back. 
at your GMC dealer today. When I heard about Vagistat 1, the new one-dose yeast infection cure, I thought, great. So I called my doctor to see if it really worked. Doctors know Vagistat 1 keeps on working for three days for an effective cure. My doctor said, absolutely it works. It's just as effective as Monistat. She was right, and I am not going back. Why on earth would I use dose after dose when Vagistat 1 works just as well? Vagistat 1, it's one real victory for women. We worry about too much TV, eating too much candy. But too much cold medicine, we had no idea. Now, we've switched to Triaminix, so we only treat the symptoms they have. And there's no chance of side effects from unnecessary medicine. Triaminix lets you choose the right relief without the worry. Fibercon or Metamucil? Both have fiber for regularity. But I like Fibercon better. Same natural action of fiber, but only Fibercon contains calcium. And with Fibercon, I get my fiber in two caplets. Fibercon, fiber and calcium in a convenient caplet. I can't get my kids to eat right. All they want is junk food. My kids love rich chocolate Ovaltine, and it's got vitamins Nestle Quick and Hershey Syrup don't. When my kids want chocolate milk, it's rich chocolate Ovaltine. More Ovaltine, please! In this job, my feet get so sweaty, smelly, and itchy, nothing helps. Introducing Gold Bond Medicated Foot Powder. Three foot relievers in one. Only Gold Bond absorbs moisture, controls odor with baking soda, and stops foot itch. New Gold Bond Medicated Foot Powder. Finally, something that really helps. Well, the mayor and Chicago's top school officials are turning up the heat on state lawmakers this Thanksgiving weekend. They stood side by side with a dozen neighborhood activists today to urge Chicagoans to call their legislators this weekend and insist they pass the school funding bill. If we get the money now, we can put the money in early childhood programs, after school programs, extended day programs, juvenile delinquency prevention programs. Not to mention the fact that the capital construction portion of the bill would, would allow us to build 20 new schools, 20 schools, replacement schools that would benefit 15,000 students. Well, the school funding bill would guarantee money through the year 2001 and raise the amount spent per student. The package includes $132 million for operating expenses for Chicago schools, another $300 million for new construction and repairs. The school funding bill comes up for a vote Tuesday, and a spokesman says Governor Edgar believes there are enough votes to pass it. An early holiday treat for drivers, an old-fashioned gas price war in Crystal Lake. With prices dipping below a dollar a gallon, some motorists are doing a double take before hastily lining up at the pump. WGN's Randy Salerno has more. It's the kind of war where everybody wins, a good old-fashioned gas war. It all started about two weeks ago when the Minuteman reopened after about six weeks of remodeling. To thank customers for their patience, they dropped prices as low as 87 cents on Thanksgiving. I don't even want to tell you how old I am, but it's been a very long time. I remember 29 cents, so this isn't too terribly bad. Oh, that's a nice piece of uh, cheerful news. I don't know how long it'll last, but uh, it's, it's a good sign, good things. Not wanting to be outdone, the Clark Station joined in the fun, and they were today's price leader at 95 cents. People lined up all day to get a crack at gas, some 33 cents lower than the Cook County average and 26 cents lower than the state average. I'm from Woodstock, so every time I hit Crystal Lake, I fill up whether I need it or not. Are you doing any extra driving or putting some in the garage or anything to kind of stockpile? No, not really. Just for the lawnmower, but other than that, no. I just keep filling up so it gets a half a tank. I bring my daughter's car, my car, and my wife's car. So how much money are you really saving? Well, you know what? We did a little math. And we figured out that if you're buying 10 gallons of gas, you're saving about $2.60 over the state average. But if you figure you just waited in line for 15 minutes and, well, let's say your time is worth $10 an hour, well, guess what? You just spent $2.50 to save $2.60. Still, for many people, it's worth it. A gas-powered trip down memory lane. When the war will end is anyone's guess. In Crystal Lake, Randy Salerno, WGN News. <laughs> Well, the last of the McCoy septuplets is now breathing by himself. Nathan Roy has been taken off his respirator. In a taped statement, the Blank Children's Hospital said little Nathan was taken off the breathing machine and upgraded from serious to fair condition today. All the seven siblings are being fed through nose tubes. 
Doctors say their digestive systems are underdeveloped and they will be watching to see how the infants will handle the formula. The American workplace is safer than ever, but the steel industry remains a dangerous place to work. Since 1980, accidents have claimed at least 90 lives at steel facilities in northwest Indiana, which is the heart of U.S. steel making. This year has been among the worst, with at least seven deaths so far. Managers blame workers taking shortcuts, but steel workers say management pressure is forcing them to cut corners. When Malaysia's Twin Towers overtook Chicago's Sears Towers, the world's tallest buildings, they became the symbols for Asia's economic miracle. Now the towers are symbols of a looming real estate crisis that would deepen the region's economic crisis. Experts are warning that property value, values in some major Asian cities could fall as much as 50%. Well, less than two months after Hurricane Pauline swept through Mexico's top resort destination, Acapulco is ready for the winter tourist season. Pauline dumped 24 inches of rain on Acapulco in 10 hours in early October, killing 160 people and washing mud out of the mountains onto famous beaches. The city's tourist industry was threatened, but thousands of volunteers joined a military force to clean up this mess in record time. American workplace safety, Malaysia's Saturnus Towers, and Alcapoco's restored paradise are the headlines tonight. Read more about these stories in Sunday's Chicago Tribune. And your live lottery drawing is coming up next. Stay with us. I used to drink ordinary hot cocoa. But then I tried Ovaltine Hot. It's smooth and creamy. Creamy because it's made with milk, not water. It's chocolatey. And it's good for me, too. Ovaltine Hot. Compare it to your hot cocoa and taste the difference. In this job, my feet get so sweaty, smelly, and itchy. Nothing helps. Introducing Gold Bond Medicated Foot Powder. Three foot relievers in one. Only Gold Bond absorbs moisture, controls odor with baking soda, and stops foot itch. New Gold Bond Medicated Foot Powder. Finally, something that really helps. <laughs> Live from WGN-TV Chicago, the official drawing of the Illinois Lottery. Good evening, this is John Conrad with your winning lottery numbers for Friday, November 28th, 1997. Our first game tonight is pick three. And here we go. The first winning number in the pick three game is seven. The second number, one. And the third and final number, zero making tonight's winning pick three number 710. Now let's move on to pick four. Release the numbers into the chamber and be sure you stay tuned for tonight's big game. The drawing is worth five million dollars. But let's get back to pick four. The first winning number in the pick four game is six. The second number is eight. The third number, one. And the fourth and final number, nine, making tonight's winning pick four number, six, eight, one, nine. Now it's what we've all been waiting for. It's time to play Little Lotto. Now remember, this is the game where you get paid all at once. Let's see who the winner is. The first winning number in the Little Lotto game is seven. The second number, 10. The third number, eight. The fourth number, two. And the fifth and final number is 12, making tonight's winning little lotto number zero, seven, 10, eight, two, and 12. Join us tonight for the big game drawing. I'm John Conrad. Have a great evening. Tonight's lottery drawing has been supervised by the accounting firm of Alt Schiller, Melvoin & Glasser and is brought to you by WGN-TV. What do the experts say about Hi Ho Cheerio? You gotta get all of the cherries in the bucket. Two cherries. One, two. Hi Ho Cheerio, a child's first counting game. I love playing again. It's so much fun. Where have all the cookies gone? Into Hershey's Cookies and Cream. A mouthful of cookies in every bite. 
We worry about too much TV. Eating too much candy? But too much cold medicine? We had no idea. Now, we've switched to Triaminic, so we only treat the symptoms they have. And there's no chance of side effects from unnecessary medicine. Triaminic lets you choose the right relief without the worry. Fibercon or Metamucil? Both have fiber for regularity. But I like Fibercon better. Same natural action of fiber, but only Fibercon contains calcium. And with Fibercon, I get my fiber in two caplets. Fibercon, fiber and calcium in a convenient caplet. I can put that spoon down anytime I want. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, too irresistible for adults. You just don't get as much milk with a fork, that's all. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Now you can feed your minds while you feed your body. Mm. Oh, with savings on exciting software programs from Microsoft and most Kellogg series. Three Metro train accidents leave two men dead and another critically injured all since mid-afternoon today. A 36-year-old man remains in critical condition after being struck by a Metro train about 7 o'clock tonight in Hyde Park near 51st Street. In Arlington Heights, a man was struck and killed by another Metro train along Northwestern Highway, or Northwest Highway rather. A third man was killed by a Metro train early this afternoon in the 1400 block of North Lawndale. The cause of each of the three train accidents still under investigation. Steve? Well, this uh, Friday after Thanksgiving was also called Fur Free Friday by some 60 protesters downtown. The demonstrators were protesting the use of animal fur as clothing, saying the animals die a cruel death in the process. Chicago police provided an escort for the marchers to help keep the rally peaceful, a rally that in past years has led to some arrests. We're trying to educate the ignorant and shame the cruel because there's really no reason to be wearing fur coats today. There's plenty of things that are warmer. Fur protests were held in several other cities. There were arrests in some, like in San Francisco, New York, and Dallas. Nowadays, when you go out to dinner or lunch, it is not uncommon to be served beer freshly brewed on the premises. That's right. Microbreweries are beer pubs that have popped up in Chicago and all across the country. And as WGN's Lisa Lee reports, it has all become big business. Beer. Rich, dark, delicious, and now fresh. I never liked canned beer. Like drinking aluminum. Microbreweries and these brew pubs started popping up all across the country about five years ago. What was thought to be a fad caught fire and has now turned into a billion dollar business. Beer is, it's American. People are drawn to the fact that we brew our own beer. What do I like about this place? It's next door to my work. And another plus for customers, they can watch the batches of beer actually being brewed right on the premises. Mark Kaufman heads up the operation. Grain, usually malted barley, goes through a mashing process in these huge tanks and then the mixture is boiled. It's then cooled down and pumped through tubing uh, into uh, the stainless steel tank over to the right of the, of, the, of the copper tank and that's where we add the yeast to it and that's where the fermentation takes place. Kaufman says the whole process takes about two weeks. It's very much of a, a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Ever screw up a batch? Only once, and out of 70, 80 batches that I've done so far, uh, that's not too bad. And what's on tap today? Fruit beer, pale ale, stout, and something called nut brown ale. I think I've tried them all already, so I'm just uh, rehashing. Microbreweries, definitely not a fad anymore, especially with more and more glasses doing this. In Washington, Lisa Lee, WGN News. Well, to compete with the popularity of these micro-brews, the uh, big beer makers have started putting out their own special recipe beers. And if you're having trouble seeing outside, it's not because you've had too many of those micro-brews. <laughs> we have some dense fog moving into the region. And it looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. Tom's forecast is up next, and then the king of sports. That's right, Allison. I am Rich King, the king of sports. We've got some high school football championship action coming up. Plus, if the Bulls' road troubles continue in Indianapolis tonight, we've got some details on that. We'll also hear from the winningest coach in college football, Eddie Robinson story, coming up later on during sports. You may never need your car insurance company early in the morning or late at night. But we offer 24-hour service anyway. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
What do you get from your agent for all that money you overpay on car insurance? Another year to wonder why. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. My sunny, funny Sarah. Never a frown, unless she has a fever. Then I give her children's Advil. It can work almost 45 minutes faster than children's Tylenol. Lasts up to eight hours, too. There's that smile. Children's Advil. The label says 99% fat-free, but inside is the classic taste of original Chef Boyardee. Introducing 99% fat-free Chef Boyardee. If we didn't tell you, you'd never know. 34 boys, 3 bathrooms, and a new Glade Spin Fresh in every one. Because it not only keeps the bathroom fresh continuously, Glade Spin Fresh delivers an extra burst of freshness with every spin. Refillable Spin Fresh, fresh from Glade. My kids love chocolate milk. This isn't just ordinary chocolate milk. It's rich chocolate Ovaltine. It's got vitamins. Nestle Quick and Hershey Syrup don't. For my kids, it's not ordinary chocolate milk. It's rich chocolate Ovaltine. Born Ovaltine, please! Now there's a new way to prevent and treat diaper rash. Medicated Gold Bond Cornstarch Plus Baby Powder. Only Cornstarch Plus has triple action with cornstarch to absorb, kaolin to soothe, and zinc oxide to protect against wetness. New Gold Bond Cornstarch Plus. More than a baby powder. It's medication. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. A little too much of a good thing on the Thanksgiving table last night. Well, it is just the beginning of uh, many more holiday treats to come. Now, if willpower is failing, failing you, how about some nose power? <laughs> CNN's medical correspondent Rhonda Rowland explains. Is it possible to lose weight by saturating your sense of smell with, say, the aroma of chocolate chip cookies? Neurologist Alan Hirsch says it is. Jarrah Hager is giving the diet a try. The frequency between meal snacking. Definitely less. less. Whenever Jared gets a craving, instead of succumbing to it, she takes a whiff of this. What did that one smell like? Uh, kind of chocolatey, almost kind of a chocolate coffee taste, or smell rather. Do you feel like eating a cookie right now? No, this was pretty satisfying. Dr. Hirsch says in a six-month study, patients lost an average of 30 pounds, or five pounds a month. People are going to maybe find that a little hard to believe. Like if you go past McDonald's or something, you smell that aroma, you want to go in and buy some and eat some. So how could this work? Well, that's exactly right. It's, you do want to. And that's just because, you know, Pavlov only looked for three minutes. But what happens if you're not exposed just for three minutes to food smell, but exposed all day long? Not only do you lose the desire to eat it, the food smell eventually becomes repulsive to you. In the study, patients took 18 to 288 sniffs a day. The more sniffs, the more weight they lost. Dr. Hirsch doesn't know if the pounds stay off for good or why odor suppresses the appetite. A new year-long study should sniff out those answers. So I don't, I'm not sure this is going to be a good combination. By mixing aromas, Dr. Hirsch discovered a number of unusual combinations can have a potent effect. For instance, you may want to keep that Thanksgiving pumpkin pie around. Combined with lavender, it makes a sensual scent. We can find the number one odor that increased penile blood flow was a combination of lavender and pumpkin pie. If women want to induce uh, male sexual arousal, they're much better off with food items than with perfumes. Perfumes increased arousal 3% compared to 40% for the lavender pumpkin pie combination. And now start to pedal now. Hirsch says studies show pleasant odors result in greater calorie burn than unpleasant aromas. A good thing to keep in mind when trying to work off those pounds gained during the holidays. Rhonda Rowland, CNN, Chicago. I'd like try one of those. I don't know about you, Allison, but I think uh, it'd be tough to pass up and buy the Thanksgiving turkey just for a, a sniff of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you did say you want one of those things. So yeah. It might work. It might. If you like oysters, you'll want to hear about this government report. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said today oysters contaminated by human feces are to blame for last winter's outbreak of stomach illness in the southeast. The report says Louisiana oyster harvesters and oil rig employees often dump their excrement overboard. The 169 people who got sick had a virus that only comes from human waste. So from the good smell story to whatever. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> Tom's forecast is still ahead. When sinus congestion brings on pain, it can feel like torture. Advil cold and sinus stops the pain and pressure. With the combined strength of Advil and a powerful decongestant, Advil cold and sinus, relief that goes right to your head. 
multi-grain Cheerios. I love these little things. Well, actually, this is new multi-grain Cheerios Plus. Plus what? Well, we added 100% of 10 vitamins and minerals. Now, you didn't go messing with how good they taste, did you? Made them taste even better. Mm -hmm. It's more delicious, plus more nutritious, with 100% of 10 vitamins and minerals. New multi-grain Cheerios Plus. I love them. Now, don't you go change it. Linda, honey, you made a mistake. This isn't pie and salt. Go oh, hey, if it smells like pie and it saves a dime, what's the mistake? Ah, well, let me show you something. Guess how many of those you'd have to buy to equal the cleaning power in one pine saw? Two? Double it. Four? Not only that, pine saw has more cleaning power than any of these national brands. And everyone knows pine saw still disinfects. Diane, you are so smart. Yeah, well, I've got a degree in domestic engineering. Oh. It's fall. That means two things. Football and project. That's why we're having the True Value Kickoff Kick-In Sale. We're kicking it off by kicking in savings throughout the store. So you can get all those projects done and still have time to enjoy the season. Right now, get this 93-piece socket and tool set with quality Stanley tools for just $88.88. True Value, official hardware store of the NFL and homes everywhere. When my son David has a cold, he's powerless. So when he's all congested, I know it does the trick. Robitussin cold. It has the power to make even the worst cold symptoms. Well, you know. Robitussin cold. Recommended by Dr. Mom. Copperfield. There's another reason to smile tonight. Skate on State is open. Now, it doesn't officially open until Monday, but a ton of people strapped on their skates for an early spin, and plenty of others have fun just watching. That would be me. <laughs> There's no charge for using the ice if you bring your own skates, and the city will begin offering free lessons on Saturdays. That's me and Tom mm, Gilling. That's right. You, oh, you need them too? Oh, yeah. Beginning yeah. December 13th. We'll wait till the next Saturday. Yeah, there you go, uh, skate on State is open every day from 9 to 7, 15 except Thursdays when the stays open to 9.45 p.m. if you can keep track of all those. And Tom, obviously they've got some way to freeze that because the weather's certainly not good. Well, I'm wondering if they're seeing each other tonight down there, you know? And also, right. my recollection of uh, ice skating is being sore. On the, <laughs> on the, the rear end, right? Yeah, right. Because mm -hmm. uh, heaven knows I was there a lot of the time. <laughs> hey, we did have some fog develop. It's a textbook fog situation. Mm -hmm. This could last into tomorrow night. Let's look at the time lapse because this is really amazing. This shows the fog literally coming together across the See, first we have these low clouds. The camera is uh, dotted with raindrops. All of a sudden, watch the fog just come together. See it there? Just assembling down there in Grant Park as the winds turn northeast. This is really pretty amazing. And before it's all over, we totally lose visibility. Uh, visibility right next to our camera here at the Field Museum has been down as low as zero at times tonight and has kind of oscillated between an eighth of a mile and zero. Fact is, there's a storm moving at us tonight. It sent one wave of rain in already. There are the big thunderstorms developing downstate. And we think that as the night goes on, some of these rains will well back northward again. Uh, the offshoot of all this convection down here to the south, which may be a severe weather maker. Watch on the radar as the rains march north. Just drizzle and light rains, but they build during the day tomorrow and become steadier as the day goes on. And then we could rain at times tomorrow and tomorrow night. But fog, that may be the big story, especially being the big holiday week. And there's a dense fog advisory in effect. See the dew point plot right here? This is moist air in the green. And it extends all the way from the Gulf of Mexico, a thousand miles to the north. Uh, it's the reason we got so warm today. When we were south of this front, the winds were southerly and we hit 56 degrees. In fact, this day averaged the warmest uh, that any day has averaged high and low together so far in the month of November. But into that moist air came a cool front. The moisture has generated low and mid 50 dew points sink that front through the area, the wind goes northeast off the 40 degree waters and instantly you create condensation as the temperature drops right down to the dew point where the fog forms as the cool air comes in off the lake. So the lake is one of the building mechanisms, but you can see Milwaukee has low visibility, so does Oshkosh, Madison, La Crosse, Wisconsin, out by the Quad Cities, uh, even down to the south of us too, uh, low visibility over in lower Michigan in spots too. So there's a lot of this going on. This storm has been marching across the country, and because one strong jet's north and one strong jet's south, this thing's just been kind of spinning uh, in place and very slowly creeping at us. That's why it is here three days later, the storm is only now sending its main energy up in our direction. 
And look at the radar laid over the, our, our weather flight tonight. These are big, powerful thunderstorms capable of producing severe weather. The cold air is up there. The freeze line up to Menominee, Michigan, and La Crosse. 50 degree low temperatures will occur in our southern suburbs if you go far enough south and may have a half an inch more rain on the way after one to two inches fell down to the south in Kankakee and Grundy counties, according to observers and Doppler radar. Rains tomorrow and tomorrow night begin rebuilding with a half an inch to inch area, uh, as you can see right there. The Arctic air, new data in tonight indicates a plunge of this is going to come down after a mild day, 50 plus temperatures Tuesday, hitting us on Wednesday when rain will change to snow and we may have some cold air. We're in the mid 40s right now with northeast winds at 9 and a humidity of 100% in Chicago. No wonder we're predicting widespread fog tonight. That will be locally dense, drizzly, with perhaps even some rain from that drizzle later tonight and toward morning. Low temperatures down to 42 and east northeast winds not real strong. That's the same picture tomorrow. The winds blow off the lake where it will be 46 while it's 53 inland. So that keeps it foggy and rainy but the winds never really get strong or dry enough to do anything to the dense fog, especially at the lake. Tomorrow night, rainy and foggy, the winds begin to pick up, low temperature 41, but that fog could still be thick and in the area. And the rain uh, and wind may thin the fog, but it won't totally disappear Sunday. Still, it may not be the major travel problem. It has been... Uh, say tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I was looking at the Michigan Avenue Bridge up. Yeah. Traffic moving very slowly. Uh, some problems. Very slowly, and it depends on where you are, but uh, you'll find these waves of low visibility come in from mm -hmm. time to time. And wait till you see the seven-day outlook, Allison and Steve. There have been big changes in the middle of next week we've been forced to make. Back with that later on. Okay, we'll see you then. Okay, Thanks, you bet. Well, starting next week, you better uh, look twice before parking your car. Chicago will begin enforcing its winter parking restrictions early Monday morning. On priority routes, overnight parking will be banned. Altogether, and on arterial streets, parking will be restricted for more than two inches of snow is on the ground. The parking regulations are intended to help the city keep its streets free of ice and snow. Well, you may find yourself standing in longer lines this uh, holiday shopping season. We're going to tell you why up next. Do you know who killed him? Charles Bronson, messenger of death. Saturday night at 10.30 on WGN. Today, people are out there doing, reaching beyond the norm, and no muscle ache, no headache will bring them down. Because today, we have an advanced medicine called Advil. Advil works fast, right at the site of body pain, stopping it where it starts. The relief is glorious. Headaches to muscle aches, Advil relieves all kinds of pain. Advil simply lets people do what they love to do. After a quiet day on Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up 28 points at 78.23. New York Stock Exchange volume totaled more than 189 million shares. Well, another indicator of a bustling economy, low employment. That means long lines at the checkout counters this holiday season as retailers struggle to find extra sales help. WGN's Tim Calhoun files this report from our Washington Bureau. The holiday shopping season is in full swing. Consumers are eager to spend, thanks, say analysts, to a steady rise in personal income levels over 12 straight months. The national unemployment rate is at its lowest in 24 years, but good fortune, say economists, can often spell trouble for many retailers. Why? Well, it means that uh, workers are harder to find, particularly part-time workers, because uh, when unemployment is high, people will take part-time jobs if they have to. Many retailers boost their staff by 20 to 40 percent in November and December, but in what economists call such a robust economy, many retailers are being forced to offer higher wages and bigger bonuses in their campaign to reel in extra holiday help. Industry experts suggest shopping from home can come in handy. Also take advantage of the catalogs. Um, that's a wonderful way to avoid, shop, uh, avoid the shopping crush. Industry experts said shoppers could expect to be frustrated as they waited in long lines in anticipation of a variety of sales. However, shoppers beg to differ. We came into Nordstrom and immediately like three or four people came up to see if they could help us, which was um, pretty dramatically different from other department stores. 
While some department stores may have felt the pinch for not having enough sales help, overall, shoppers remained optimistic about getting in and out of retail shops quickly with everything for that Christmas wish list. We were nervous coming in because we didn't get here till about 10.30. But we found a parking place at the door and good sales help. Economists add that with no downward spending trends in sight, consumers can really expect to shop until they drop for the next two Christmases. In Washington, Tim Calhoun, WGN News. Retailers count on the holidays for about half their annual sales and profits. Last year, consumers did 10% of their Christmas shopping during the weekend right after Thanksgiving. Steve, the ring of holiday cash registers is one sure sign of a strong economy, but some experts swear by the telltale sound of ripping paper. Do it. He's been dying to do that all night. It's called the gift wrap indicator. It predicts holiday sales will shoot up 4.9% this holiday season. R rip some more as retailers are buying more wrapping paper. That's because they're betting a strong economy and low unemployment will bring consumers into their stores. All right, no. <laughs> While gift giving is still important, the gift itself may not be something that you can wrap up and put in a box. It may be a health club membership. It may be a night out on the town. Not all holiday shopping news is rosy. American Express estimates the average shopper will spend $879 this year on gifts. That's $21 less than last year. Well, the next script I'm supposed to read is... It's gone. <laughs> Coming up, it's the end of an era for the winningest coach in college football history. Rich King takes a look at Eddie Robinson's career. Plus, the Bulls continue to struggle on the road. All the highlights coming up next in sports. 34 boys, three bathrooms, and a new Glade Spin Fresh in every one. Because it not only keeps the bathroom fresh... You'll have to see it to believe it. And all new, Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, Saturday at 3 on WGN. Tomorrow only, Zales is opening early with an extra $100 savings from 8 to 10 a.m. Like these $4.99 half-carat diamond earrings for just $3.99. Or this $5.99 one-carat diamond bracelet for just $4.99. Or this $6.99 one-carat diamond ring for just $5.99. Special $100 savings tomorrow only. And through Sunday, get 12 months interest free. At sales. So hurry. A little bump in the road tonight for the Bulls down in uh, Indianapolis. That's been a tough early year. When's yeah. Pippen coming back? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully someday. From west to east, the Bulls' long road trip continued in Indiana tonight. Besides the usual Jordan Miller grudge match, add Larry Bird into the mix as coach of the Pacers. You have a pretty good show going on. The Pacers playing a bit harder this year for the NBA legend. The Bird saw the same old Michael he played against. MJ with the slam here. He always plays hard. Bulls led by seven in the third, but Chris Mullen brought the Pacers back as he gets a nice feed there from Jackson and cans it in the corner. Indiana by one. Patients then took a five-point edge. Dennis under rejection. They come down the court, and Miller will score the nice move here. He had 24 points. Bulls, however, not dead yet in this one. Luke Longley gets to Michael here. MJ the reverse. He had 26. But then the Pacers led by a five late. And here's the real dagger. Ouch. Three-pointer by Reggie. And that was just about it. Antonio Davis will wrap it up with the tip. The Bulls have lost two in a row and are two and six on the road this year. So the Bulls... Drop another one thanks to the Pacers' 25 second chance points. The only positive note, Michael moved into the fourth place in the all-time scoring list in the NBA. College ball, Denny Crum had his team in the wrong uniform today against Illinois. He had a change during the game to red jerseys. Both teams had white. Red brought him no luck for more than three quarters, though, as the Illini in control. Matt Heldman pulls up, nails a three. Illinois led by 13 late in the game, but they couldn't score a field goal in the final 543. Louisville grabs the lead here in the alley-oop to Eric Johnson. Illini still had a chance, though, down by one, but Jerry Hester misses this layup, and Denny Crum wins it. Illini losing their first of the year, and their record now is 4-1 and one for the season. Well, nothing better than high school state finals. Four games today featuring Providence of New Lenox going for its fourth straight 4A title. 
Celtics coach Matt Stefner had to sweat this one out though before it was all over. Metamora seeking revenge from a year ago. Jeremy Dykes gets loose in the fourth. 40-yard run here. This ties the game at 12-all. But then Mr. Everything for Providence, David Pop, comes through big time. Watch this. The juggling winner. Harlan Hill of the 50s. Great catch. 65 yards. Celtics are 6-0 in title games. They have won, won 20 straight playoff games. Meantime, Joe Thorgerson and Maple Park Kane Caneland uh, really took it to Harrisburg in the 3A. This game never close. Eric Delaney, a touchdown pass to T.J. Fleck. 10-0 at the quarter. Delaney had a pair of touchdown passes, both going to Fleck. This run from 16 yards away. Caneland, the easy winner. They go 14-0 and take the 3A title. The Raiders of Moequa Central A&M had lost two title games the last two years by combined two points. But today, Eddie Jordan scored five touchdowns. This one coming in an 80-yard punt return. Moequa finally breaking through. The Raiders win their first 2A title by a TD over St. Joseph Ogden. And also, Galena beat Stark County 14-0 in the 1A championship game. Well, he coached his first game 22 days before the attack on Pearl Harbor. And tomorrow, 56 years and a record 408 wins later, Eddie Robinson of Grambling will be coaching his last game. Grambling takes on Southern U in the Bayou Classic in New Orleans Superdome. 74,000 fans expected to see the final game. For men who sent 210 NFL players into the action, and more importantly, at a graduation rate of 85%. I wanted to give something back to our society because uh, someplace I read they said that the foundation of any nation is predicated on the education of its youth. He didn't worry about, okay, let's get out there and make this guy an All-American. He said, let's get out there and make this guy a productive citizen. You don't replace Eddie Robinson. You don't fill his shoes. What you do, Eddie Robinson's shoes, you pick them up, you bronze them, and you put them on the pedestal. Eddie Robinson coached four NFL Hall of Famers, but he says the thing he's most proud of is having one wife yeah. and one job for more than 50 years. Rick Neuheisel, a pup compared to Robinson, but he gave here in Colorado, gave Nebraska a real scare today. Ahmad Green saved the day for the Cornhuskers, 202 yards rushing. Gets loose here from 17 yards away. Nebraska keeps its national title hopes alive, remaining unbeaten at 11 and 0. A sour day in Sweden for the U.S. Davis Cup team. Michael Chang losing in four sets to Jonas Borkman here. Made it 1 nothing Sweden at that point, and it was adios in the second match because Pete Sampras defaulted. He pulled calf muscle to hand the match to Marcus Lar uh, Mangus Larson. Sweden a, uh, in control, leading that thing 2 to nothing. So, big day for Eddie Robinson. I hope they pack him in there to see that great oh, coach. Yeah. Uh, what a great career he's at. Legend. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, All right. Rich. When you wake up in seven day forecast, you're straight ahead. Stay with us. Allison, it uh, probably beats shoveling something. Sure, Allison, it uh, probably beats shoveling something. Oh, sure. <laughs> but we may do that by the end of next week if uh, some of the changes work out. Here's a look at our uh, current temperatures. Look how warm it is down in St. Louis still in the 60s. Uh, 54 was our rating earlier today. We're down to 44 right now, and we have uh, low visibility, but that rain is spreading north. That's to be. Uh,